to a very old building, almost as if it was carved into a part or, or a part of a rocky hill. The teacher took me inside. It was dark. We then seemed to have traveled down into a dungeon-like place. It was pitch black with brick wall encircling us, which extended high above us. And at the top, there was a small hole which allowed some light to fall into the dungeon pit. The little light shone on a man chained up with some chains broken. The light allowed us to see the man only had loin cloth covering him, which only covered his lower parts. His upper body was exposed. We saw that he was well built. It was obvious that this was the Dajjal. The Dajjal then acknowledged that we were there and knew the teacher referring to them as Ahmed. I asked the teacher if I could, ask, if I could speak to the Dajjal and ask him some questions. The teacher permitted me to do so. I asked the Dajjal if he is the Samiri. The Dajjal responded by saying yes, but then he said, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I then asked him how he became the Dajjal. He said something along the lines that he wanted to be the chosen one, but instead Allah chose others. I got the impression that he was speaking about Sayyidina Musa and Harun as I saw glimpses of them. He said that he deserved that rank and power and because he didn't get to be the one with the high status and rank, he chose to be the one who would be the king of deception and leading people into sin. He wanted to rule over mankind, be their false messiah as a way of getting revenge against Allah. He chose the path of wickedness and essentially became the messenger of evil. Then the thought came to mind that I should take lesson from this. That when others such as my spiritual brothers are given statuses or roles, it is Allah's decree and I should not harbor jealousy, envy and become so arrogant that to think that I am something or deserving of anything. He then started boasting about all the people he rules over. Some willfully obey him and some do his work without realizing. I then saw glimpses of the Saudi crown prince and those who were involved in the UAE's recent pledge of friendship with Israel. He then said, look at what I'm doing with this coronavirus and then laughed arrogantly. He also said, he also said something along the lines that he doesn't follow shaitan, he follows no one and he does as he wishes. It then appeared to me that he was his, in his own right a great disobedient, vengeful kafir and had become, fallen similar to how Iblis fell. He then directed his attention to me and said, even you, you don't, you don't think you follow me? I've been watching you, you've also succumbed to my tools. I was then shown the sins I have engaged with. This angered the teacher, <coughs> and the teacher grabbed him by his throat. He then mockingly said, calm down, Ahmed. I'm only doing what your Lord has permitted me to do. Then the teacher said to him, if it, were, if it was not for the will of Allah, we would have finished you long ago. I then asked the Dajjal, what do I do to stay away from you? He then said in a mocking tone, follow him, the chosen one, and pointed towards the teacher. We then left the location and flew out. We were then looking down on the earth from above. It seemed as though we flew from a location off the Yemeni coast, east of Arabia. Then it was as if the teacher blew over the earth, washing it, cleansing it, giving the, inha giving the inhabitants a short respite from the Dajjal's bombardments. The teacher said, Sh Shaitan al-Dajjal tirelessly assault the people. The Diwan only carry out the will of Allah. We cannot destroy him and Shaitan because they have made their covenants of disobedience. And Allah has allowed them to exist, to test the people and to differentiate between the obedient and the disobedient. The teacher then looked at me and said, my son, I love you more than you can imagine. We never leave you. You are always in our concerns. You need to keep striving against yourself. I then started to cry. And then the teacher held me in their arms and started to re read the dhikr. Allah, 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 like a mother to their baby. I then disappeared into the teacher and the vision ended there. Right, in there, there are certain secrets revealed sometimes when a person goes through the spiritual world, certain secrets also unveil. Uh, but we should be focusing more on the drawing, the lesson actually. So, about the Jal, you may say that there is one person who went to extreme for disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from jinnat and one person from human beings. The person who went to extreme from jinnat is shaitan himself. So, and the person who went to the other extreme the of astrayness and fitna from human beings, it is the jar. And because human beings, they have more power, so he is even bigger fitna, more powerful than even when he will be in, uh, come out as a, uh, than shaitan. Because shaitan works most of the time in an unseen way, sinister way. And he 
will work both ways. He works the secret way, he has that power, and also outward power coming in front of people. Now, Shaitan cannot do that as such, actually, so he has a power. So that's why he's not following Shaitan directly, meaning he's not like his student or anything like this. But they're doing the same thing. One is kind, different kind, like of jinn, one is, uh, for example, a human being. And most importantly, he mentioned that how this led to him. Uh, unfortunately, both of them, same thing led to their astrayness. It was the same reason which led to shaitan becoming shaitan and the jal becoming the jal. It was the same reason that they became, they wanted to be actually the only ones actually or superior than others. Shaitan also wanted to be superior than others so Adam al Islam was actually uh, 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 enemy for him. He turned into an enemy of his. He also wanted a very superiority but uh, it's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who he chooses. So he chose for example another person uh, over actually him um, uh, a prophet in previous times and in these times a wali or whatever so you have the lesson for yourself in there that uh, that lesson for us is that not to actually even think of actually competing negatively with others because be it wealth be it actually spiritual power, be it piety and righteousness and things, that's their part. We do not have any concern that we, the matter is between we and Allah. We should look where we are in relation to Allah, not where others are. If they do get something, they get some, the medal. If they don't get, they don't get. What's me to do with it? If they get something, I don't. If they don't get same same thing, I don't get something. Meaning, it doesn't bother me. It's like uh, you are in a different completely. So one should. Uh, so the major lesson to learn is actually that not to be jealous of people. If a person is more higher than spiritually or otherwise, Allah gives him, then you should be benefiting from him, submitting to him, thinking that actually that he, you should benefit, rather than saying, oh, why not me? So why not me led Izazil to become Iblis and he to become the Jal? The Jal actually was descendant of actually pious people, meaning in the, in the sense, uh, Adam al Islam descended, then actually the, um, of other, the Ibrahim al Islam and, and also Shaitan also had actually um, as a you know, history of the, uh, actually piety and righteousness at one time. So it is a very big lesson and danger for us, for especially. You don't need to compare. You need to compare yourself to yourself in relation to Allah. What is Allah demanding from you? How much you have fulfilled? It is like you're working in a different company. You work in a hospital. Another person works in another hospital. He can get status here, he can get status there, they are paying him for that, they, are, they, they don't need to compete with each other, they are separate uh, accounts, separate things, so everyone has a separate destiny, separate risk. So it is foolishness to be jealous to others, but rather as far as one should is, one should have goodness, good wishes for others to succeed. He should have the wish for others to succeed, others to have more, actually like this. So a lot of lessons as well, as well uh, you heard directly uh, from actually that Ahle Divan, Ahle Divan are who? The Ghaus, the Qutb, the Abdal, and these people, they already know they have the power, but obviously they only do things which actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills at a particular time. They execute the commands of Allah, they don't uh, operate independently. But uh, it is not hidden from them that where, for example, the Jal is, where Yajuj, Majuj is. I mean, let's say this is earthly thing. They even know 
every place of every angel in the first heaven why why where they are what they are doing if they pay attention so much so that even they know the count of the hair of people's head on this face of the earth is one so we I mean that is knowledge which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives uh, if he want, wants so so that's not this about earthly we talking about heaven and thing so yeah and um, so many uh, other lessons as well uh, obviously they are you mentioned they are self explanatory so sometimes these evil people they also tell you something good so for example one uh, rasulullah one sahabi came to the prophet of islam and he said i met a person who came to steal at night time and i probably it was hazrat umar radhiyallahu anhu or another companion i wrestled with him and this happened the night experience they were mentioning and uh, when he caught him then he said well leave me and i'll tell you something very beneficial and what is that if you read aitul kursi shaitan cannot harm you okay that good and well go so when he mentioned this to the prophet al islam prophet al islam said that was the actual shaitan he was the shaitan but he spoke truth this what he said about aitul kursi is right thing so if now in this experience he tells you to follow the sunna or the prophetic way i mean that sharia of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is always on the truth and i mean so and and you have seen that how the ahle diwan they try to purify and they actually make things people better for people as much as they have the ability and permission and uh, to uh, alhamdulillah do that anyway many many lessons and some actually uh, matters of the unseen and secrets as well in there jazakallah Uh, I have two short experiences, both to Hajjud and uh, spiritual prayer. Uh, do I have permission to relate? From today? Uh, there's one today and one yesterday. Uh, mention, mention. Uh, so the, the today one was uh, when we did a lot of cleansing, uh, my body felt really like loose and uh, your voice uh, felt like faded and uh, as I did a lot of cleansing, um, when I went up to uh, the yellow one, uh, I saw an image of a man being chucked onto the car. Uh, so I carried on with the lot of cleansing. And when it came to the light blue, I saw somebody getting shot. And then when it came onto the, the normal blue, the dark blue, uh, I seen somebody thrown uh, into a force field and it threw him back. Uh, then um, uh, I ended up with yourself uh, after the transfer. Uh, uh, went to the bazaar of Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Dabbaq Rahmatullah but as I was there, I, was, uh, I stopped myself uh, and I was ho hovering above uh, the Mazar Sharif and I was thinking, uh, uh, would it be disobedience to yourself if I went there because uh, in the spiritual prayer yourself mentioned to go to Medina Sharif so I didn't know uh, what to do at that time. Then I thought, uh, yourself always tells us to respect Sayyidina Aziz the Rahmatullahi and give salam there first. So I went inside and uh, with yourself and uh, give salam and they said that, oh, go to Medina Sharif. So then I asked them that if I meet the Prophet Sallallahu what should I ask them? And they mentioned that, ask them how to get how can one get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So, went to, uh, with yourself, went to Medina Sharif and yourself was in front, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in the leading prayer position. Yourself was behind them and the rest of us. And then, uh, well, just before we went to Medina Sharif, the answer already had come uh, saying obedience. So this was the only word as soon as I left the Mazar Sharif, I said, Abdul Aziz Daban, he said the word came, obedience. And so I went into Medina Sharif and uh, in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, asked the, the question and they mentioned 
to the newest meaning in my own words that obedience uh, to the teacher is like obedience uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu and obedience to the Prophet Sallallahu is obedience to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So the three go hand in hand. So whoever doesn't obey the teacher, he'll fail on the second and the third one. And uh, this is where it ended. Uh, that was uh, today's experience. Right. Should I mention? Yes, please. Uh, during the preparation uh, of the Lataif, again, yesterday's experience, the body felt light and felt between uh, consciousness and sleep-like state. During the Lataif, uh, again, uh, in the Lataifs, in each of the Lataifs, I got shown uh, other people's, uh, whether it was problems or other people's issues or images of what, what was going on. Uh, so, so with some of them, I had a conversation. I can't really remember what the conversation and others. I was just showing different images on different lives. And one of them uh, was uh, my daughters. I think they were having an argument or they were discussing something. And I think I was, uh, you know, trying to help or something like this. Uh, so that was through, throughout the lives. And then went to Medina Sharif uh, with, with yourself, with the teacher. And I felt the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the, I was asked the question, uh, what would I like? Uh, that was the question I was asked. And I said, I would like to resemble my teacher inwardly and outwardly. And then I went to Makkah Sharif and Al-Aqsa. Uh, but uh, there was one experience in Sajda that uh, you know, I'd like to relate, uh, which was that when I was in Sajda, I felt uh, that I didn't exist, like uh, there was no existence. Uh, only time I came into existence was when I heard the voice, your voice saying, Allahu Akbar. Uh, then I felt my spirit had entered into my body and gave it life. And I didn't want to get up from that position of sajda as my body didn't f uh, feel like it was strong enough to get up, uh, but wanted to stay in sajda longer. So that, that was the right. three experiences I had. Right. Okay, okay mashallah. The, you see the latai for the centers of energy, the spiritual heart and all these things, they have a relationship with the organs, meaning our limbs, whatever we do, like the Prophet Islam said, but if any person who commits evil, a dark energy or a spot appears in the inner self, in the heart, for example. So it does affect the unseen entities like Latai for centers of energy. So there is something there. And the different images which you saw, the person being chopped or actually a person arguing and thing, this shows that, that actually um, it is because of this uh, trait or this problem in this Latifa, these people have meaning, they have this actually. So that's how sometimes uh, the instructors or the mashaykh, they look, they scan, and they can see what's the, the, the taif position and from there they can know this person is argumentative, this person is uh, jealous, this person is, has this, etc, etc. So all that, uh, you may say, uh, darkness and rust actually represent different amal. So each seven organ is, has effect on different latai, one's thoughts, action. So that was shown actually and if it is you are seeing other people uh, who you know, then this means they are stuck there, actually, in a way. So they can be helped. And, um, and, and if you see just images, people, something doing, so this means that uh, you should avoid, actually, you can fall into this uh, evil if you do not uh, be careful. So what do you have, actually? Uh, it's like um, we have physical organs as well, like if someone doesn't control their eyes, they can be in trouble, for example, they can. Someone does not control their tongue, they can be in trouble. Similarly, the Lataif as well have effect. And, and uh, the other you learnt about the obedience, yes. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have not seen him, we don't know him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi introduced. So we follow the Prophet al Islam in order to close that closer to Allah. Now the Prophet al Islam taught, he didn't teach us, he taught the Sahaba Ikram, Ahl al Bayt, they taught their students and such. So if a person, if a teacher, if there is any person, a guide, or whatever you may call, Murshid or Shaykh or whatever, provided they are following the Prophet then obedience to them is as though obedience to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because they are, they represent the inheritor of the Prophet Islam in lawful matters, in ma'roof meaning lawful matters. In unlawfulness, anything against Sharia, anything, no one is to be followed though no matter say I am a big scholar or I am a big wali or I am big this and it doesn't matter. Everyone is to be uh, submitting to the Prophet Islam and things. And in sajda you said that you felt non-existent, you felt do not exist. This is when called fana, fana means annihilation, that when a person is so absorbed in the remembrance of Allah that they forget. It's like a person who sleeps, he forgets even he's sleeping. He's so actually absorbed actually there. Yeah. So the spirit is engrossed in worship. The body wants to get, but the spirit is there. So that's what happens sometimes. And it doesn't want, you didn't want to get out of uh, this position or sajda. And really, it is the most closest position you can get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Islam said, when anyone is in sajda, they are the most closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many people, awliya, others, when they go in sajda, they don't wish to get up. They wish to leave this world whilst in sajda. So every sajda is their wish. That we, we, we wish our death, if it comes, it comes whilst we are in sajda. So it is a great uh, blessing to die in submission. In, in, so that's why you find Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu. He also was in sajda uh, at, at his march because when he knew that he, he has been completely uh, paralyzed with the wounds and things. So he fell in sajda of shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shukr that Allah Azawajal blessed him uh, with this uh, test and uh, he was uh, succeeded. So my Allah, some things to learn. You see, everyone get advice specific to themselves. So especially it may be beneficial for others, but for you it is the actual thing. Like a doctor diagnoses any, for, uh, for example, disease for you, any advice, any medicine for you, that is specific for yourself, at least you will get uh, cured. So that is for you. So when we are, you ask nasiha, you get, because in salah, as I said, we are always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ihdina sirat al mustaqim, O Allah, guide us toward the straight path, guide us toward the straight path, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now you learnt another dimension of salah, which with time, like many of you are improved from when you came on Friday, now it is different. So imagine if you stay full three days focused and, and if you carry on practicing like this, inshallah, one, two days, three days, so every time, alhamdulillah, you, are, you become a person of akhirah. You have become a person of a different world, an alien person. You live in the world, but of, not of the world. So you live in the world, but the world doesn't live in you. You live in dunya, but the dunya does not live in you. That is the state which you have there actually. So it's as though you are detached from it. So that helps you to abstain from sin and other tests and things. And those people who have love of dunya, attached, it's very difficult for them. Uh, to uh, they will get it's like you when you have sweet somewhere flies and other things will sit on it they come towards there etc so the yeah, love of dunya is like this having dunya is something else love of dunya is something else so we, we are focusing not to love dunya but having dunya you can be a millionaire you can be billionaire and you your heart remains detached uh, with it and you can be a beggar, poor person, and your heart is attached to dunya. Hmm. Mashallah.
Jazakallah. Or koi anything else? Yes. Alaikum assalam rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When we were doing the ladaifs, I seen that very, it was very good for me, very clearly. Uh, I didn't get to finish it because when I got to the throat one, I was already uh, feeling quite light. So then I just transferred into like a little um, forest with yourself and um, you congratulated me on uh, transferring and you just said we're going to wait for a couple of the brothers. And then from there, I started thinking different, different things, you know, then my mind started playing up, thinking, am I bringing it on my own? Am I not bringing it? So then I just remember the three keys from there, you know, Allah is with me, Allah is watching, Allah is hearing me. And I kept repeating that for about a minute. And I just uh, looked into the sky and I, I begged Allah that he just doesn't abandon me and just um, guides me. And then from there, it started flowing. I uh, The trees kind of opened up and I seen yourself on... Uh, like a dry land, so I walked towards you and yourself, and uh, you had a green chadar on, uh, as you, like you did before, and um, you were stood there, and you hugged me, and you put the chadar around me, and you um, you uh, gave me a bottle of water because I was thirsty. Uh, once I drank some, there was a tiny bit left, and because um, you were showing me like a true compassion because we were stood on very very dry land and it, it's so dry that it had cracks in it uh, you, you you did not feel happy that you know we stood here with um, our thirst quenched when the land beneath us is dry and thirsty so you poured the water onto the land for the earth to drink it and then all of a sudden the land started growing um, plants and trees and fruits and water and then you said to me as we were walking, you said just this piece of land here is, imagine it as a representative of the purification of your uh, mind, heart and soul. So you said this land is like that, the spiritual water has purified it. So as we're going through this forest, all of a sudden you've noticed a problem. So we've gone to the corner of the land and we've seen a black figure, like a man, um, poisoning the plants and I asked you what it was and uh, you said self yeah you self said it was a figure of my nafs and it was like like yet tar and oil like poisoning the leaves and just wiping all the uh, black tar everywhere and poisoning everything and then you said um, then what you did is you showed it the book of Tazkiyah and you had a whip in the other hand and then it got very, very scared when it seen the book of Tazgi, I screamed. And then you controlled it with the whip, you hit it a few times and you said to um, clean the mess that is done on the island. The, it was slowly poisoning the plants and it was increasing on the land. Uh, it was spreading its poison all over the land. So you had it under control and you said to clean the mess up. And then you told me to watch God uh, and watch it, that it behaves. but. What it tried doing is, there was a plant next to me that had a little bit of tar on it, like black um, poison, and it said it wanted to clean it, but then as it went for the plant, it tried to grip my leg, and then you pulled me back, and then you hit it again a few times, and it said, you need to control it. And then after a while of you know you um, taming it, it, it turned into not, it just went smaller and smaller, but then turned into uh, like a light, like a, a good, like good enough, like that. It turned into that, and then you had it completely under control, and you passed the whip onto me, and you passed, passed the book of Tuski onto me, and then um, I it, I had my nafs under control from there. It was a slave. That figure that was uh, poisoning the planet it became my own personal slave. And then when we finished the spiritual salah there, you know when you said do two, the six nafal on your own, uh, the next two. Um, in the next two nafal that we got up and we started uh, Sayyidina Abdul Aziz, the Bagh and Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani come down and they said that they came to congratulate me that I finally in the spiritual realm that I've, con I've made, I've not fallen, uh, I've not become a slave to my nafs instead I've made that a slave 
and then in the next one the Prophet Sallam came down and they said that they congratulated me too and uh, we all sat down and we ate fruits from that land, uh, spiritual fruits and the last thing the Prophet Sallam said to me in my ear was your teacher has told you how to control them, control your nafs, how to overpower your nafs and how to have complete dominance over your nafs and to make it your slave and then um, the book of Tazkiyah was in my hand that was the last thing I remember and then I transferred back after that. Right. <clears throat> uh, mashallah, your experience is also a manifestation of guidance of Allah that how clear the guidance is, how clear the purification process and how it's going to be purified and uh, the book of Tazkiyah and actually how the nafs actually plays with you and how you can control it, overpower it, tame it. Uh, so all the answers are there now in front of you as the Prophet Islam said, now it is up to you. So this is the job of the teacher spiritually. They try to help you, sometimes tame, sometimes actually uh, be a little bit strict, like a doctor is strict sometimes with the patient, sometimes lenient, sometimes, because after all, they want uh, betterment, betterment of the patient and the patient sometimes he doesn't know himself <coughs> or even if he knows <coughs> like if for example I have diabetes and I keep eating sugar people some people don't uh, do have any uh, take precaution people have other disease they keep just because of the covetousness and desire they do so they need someone you know. and this is much more serious than other things and so you've been shown all the process of purification, how it's happening, how it can happen, and the fairs and the blessing. So from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the Prophet al-Islam, Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani, from myself, you have. Now the ball is in your court that you control and you stay like that and progress through the tazkiyah process. Because remember, to be impious, is against our nature. To be a person of misconduct, batamiz banna or batamiz tara, this is not our default nature. We came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our spirit, by default, they are good. They are good. And they are good. So by default, we are good. But going, we go against that because of the nafs entity which comes from this world then it actually, uh, so by default everyone, like Prophet Islam said, Kullu mauludin yulidu ala fitra, every baby is born on the nature, the true primordial nature, which is, so by default we were never, so to be evil, to be, have a bad moral, that is going against our own nature. <coughs> and uh, to be good, to be moralistic, to be good, to be, uh, have a good conduct. That is our nature. That's how we were born. But after we were born, other things we picked up through society, through other influence, TV, here and there. Closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in actual fact easy. It's not difficult if a person wants to do. Why it's easy? Because it's Allah who helps you in that. He can abandon you, anyone can abandon you, your friend, your spouse, like people. Say. Like you said in the vision uh, that you prayed it, that, oh Allah, don't abandon me. Allah loves you more than your mother loves you, uh, much more than that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never abandoned. He said, it's people, it's people who abandon Allah. Allah never abandoned anyone up to now. It's the people who go, they actually just... Uh, go away. So Allah Azza wa Jal loves, even if you make a move, even if you have a good thought, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come, rewards you. You make a movement, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is actually more forthcoming than you can, more merciful than any, and, and, the, and the love. Coming closer to Allah, like you said, someone was asking question that how to come closer to Allah is very, very easy to know, but the process you have to adopt. What is it? Now I'll just explain to you, I'll explain many times. Closeness is Allah physical entity that I can go and meet him. He has a physical being. No. He doesn't have physical existence as such. He's beyond physical. What does he have? He has qualities. He has attributes. For example, Allah is truthful. 
So if you be truthful, if you bring truth, you are connected to Allah's quality, so you are closer to Him. Allah is modest, He has haya. If you become modest, you bring modesty in you, you are connected. Allah is, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is generous, He is jawad, generous, who is Once you become generous, you again become connected to that quality, so you are closer to Allah. So it is connecting with the names of Allah. Allah is ma'abood. Ma'abood means the one who deserves to be worshipped. So ma'abood, we say la ilaha illallah, la ma'abooda illallah. When you worship, you connect to that name of Allah, ilah. So Allah has a name called ilah. Allah has a name called ma'abood. How you connect to that name? With the ibadah. Once you do ibadah, you connect to that. You become close. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving, afuv, he loves forgiving. You also start forgiving people, you come closer to Allah. Allah covers the sins of people. He doesn't expose them just first time and whenever, you know. If you become like that, you have that quality. So the more qualities of Allah attributes you emulate, the more closer you are. Simple as that. Now, Prophet Islam made it very easy because all these qualities were in him. He demonstrated all these qualities and these attributes of Allah, which he had. Inna kala azim. So that's known as sunnah. So in actual fact, we are just asked to copy Prophet Islam, and the Prophet Islam is copying Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's uh, the sifat. So it's not a big deal if a person understands. That's why we say that person who worships Allah is uh, okay. He's getting closer to Allah, but if he is Lying, then from that name, he from Allah, he is not connected. Allah's name is Al Adal. He is all just. You adopt justice, you become closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah is Ghaffar. He forgives, Ghafur, and uh, he covers people. He covers people who are in mess. If you start doing that, <laughs> Allah is Subur. He is patient. If you become patient. You are come closer. Allah is shukur. He appreciates very much thankfulness, gratefulness. If you become so, is tarah to dekhe. So is that that is closeness of Allah, Subhanahu wa taala. So to make it easy for us, Allah revealed in commands in Quran: do this, do this. They are all emanate from the sifat of Allah. And certain things which are opposite to Allah Subhanahu wa taala's qualities, He does not like. He does not like jealousy. Allah is not jealous with anyone. He does not like immodesty. He is not immodest. He does not. Li- he is not lying. He does not like lying. He is not. He, he is not impure. So he doesn't like impurity. He doesn't like dirt. So he is uh, pure. He likes purity. He is truthful. He likes actually uh, truthfulness for us as well. He is trustworthy, he likes his mom for us as well to be trustworthy, etc. etc. So agar this tarah dekhe to it's just a matter of knowing and then emulating, bringing in you and alhamdulillah. And you have come with this ability to adopt these traits are by nature of default in you from the world of spirits, they are in you. You have the ability only, you just have to work little bit. And things. To become a shaitan is against your nature. You were never born to be actually shaitan. You were born to be a worshipper of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you have the choice. You can go both ways if you want. Take a jazakallah if there's any other question. Yes, you want to say something? No. Yes, I in Um, I had an experience uh, yesterday doing Salat al uh, Yes, please do mention. Um, it was my first time doing Salat al Tasbih with the uh, spiritual prayer. Right. Um, I, I met the teacher at the Zawiya. We then travelled to Old Medina and visited the Masjid, uh, Masjid al Nabawi. <coughs> uh, we then visited the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi grave and gave salawat. Um, we appeared, and, and there was bright light shining from his grave. Um, 
We then appeared by some water and washed our feet by the shore. And the teacher put his hand in the water and uh, pulled out some pearls and gifted them to me. Then we started traveling uh, on horseback on our way to Masjid al-Aqsa. And uh, while on our journey, uh, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani joined us. Uh, when we arrived at uh, the Masjid al-Aqsa, we uh, pray, prayed Salat and the teacher led the Jamaat. Uh, we then sat in the Masjid and looked up above us and the ceiling was so high you could see no end and a bright luminous light was pouring from the ceiling. Uh, then we saw many of the various names of Allah appear in the ceiling and was rotating around and then hundreds of small birds appeared and started flying and making tawaf around the center of the masjid. The teacher then cut some pomegranate and, uh, and we ate it together. Uh, after this we traveled to Jannah and walked around for a while. There I saw uh, two little girls run up to me and the teacher told me that uh, these are my daughters. Uh, and then the teacher told me that actually everything that I want in life uh, right now, I'll, I'll actually get them all. But these will also be my test and life won't be easier because just because you get these things. My mind uh, started to wonder and simple thoughts came to my mind and the teacher hit me a few times. Uh, and then I was in a bathtub and, and scrubbing myself. Uh, we then traveled to Makkah in a, in a sports car and the teacher told me that this sports car is nothing compared to the rewards of Jannah. Uh, once we arrived um, to Makkah, we s prayed Salat facing the Kaaba. Um, the last scene I saw was uh, me and the teacher was relaxing in a very large, beautiful lake with nothing else in sight. And uh, we finished, and we, we done wudu in the lake. And then that was the end. Okay, mashallah, that is your first experience uh, of spiritual salah in namaz e tasbih And it also outlines very clearly that actually the route to purification and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like visiting the Prophet, that this is what you should be aiming for. And the lake and pearls, these are the pearls of guidance, the azkar, the guidance, because these, let's say, we are learning about this spiritual salah. For me, actually, we cannot find it in books, as well, like you can like read like this. I, I didn't get it from book. I got it from my, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from my teacher, and teacher. So these are like pearls from actually uh, uh, un unseen. Which has, and along the way you've been shown that you will be, everyone is tested through, let's say, there's attraction for a person in, like you saw the car, or actually the dunya, the women and other things actually, that one have to know that this is, I am being fixed, like you can say, people, police sometime to know that are you a drug dealer or not, they might give someone drugs to sell to you or, to, or they might come as a buyer because you are fixed actually to see they, whatever you do. Now, there are two scenarios. If you do not know that this is a fixed game, that they are trying to trap you, you, if you are drugged, you will actually buy from it or sell from them and there you are caught. And if you are told, and if you are told beforehand that today you are going to be trapped, and this will be a game for you, this will be. Now even they are worth one billion, you are not going to look at it, you know, it is a trap, it's a fixed thing. So this world is a fixed game. And women you see, people you see, they are all fixed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to test you. It's not the real deal, it is just to see how you react. The real things are going to come in Jannah. So a person who understands this, that here everything is fixed, tests it fixed to trap me, it's easy for him. He says, I'm not going to get into this trap, actually. But if you think it's the real deal, if it is real, nothing is going to happen, then people do fall into this. So, meaning, yes, there is attraction in dunya, but the blessings which Allah, like you, cars, other things have created, a higher version of all these blessings are in Jannah, which we, Allah wants us to have a better quality things then actually we are content with and we can lose 
and uh, also so mashallah this experience plus this guidance is uh, you know yeah, that if sometime people have many blessings like in the vision you say i have everything but even you have everything it is still a test for you you are still being actually examined actually so the real blessing come in jannah which does not have an element of test in them here everything has a double side is a blessing have another side of being test as well so if you don't have that's a test as well if you have something so is you are being tested because this is the world of ibtila allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said khalaq al maut wal hayat liyabluwakum this part of our life death and life cycle is part of the test other is the result then actually so ye cheez mashallah so if you inshallah if you continue as you see and uh, the tazkiyah and others there is no reason why you cannot improve day by day and get closeness to allah subhanahu wa taala you can become as i was saying a miniature model of the sifat of allah subhanahu wa taala that you will be going along here with few sifat the faz of the allah's qualities truthfulness in you modesty is in you yeah allah likes for us whatever he likes for himself he doesn't like lying because he does not lie so he said to us don't lie he doesn't lie he is not immodest he doesn't like immodesty for us he is not oppressing someone he doesn't like us to oppress he is trustworthy we he wants us to be uh, trustworthy he is not unjust he doesn't want us so why do you want to do something which even allah does not do you know this is something to think he has power over everything and by in spite of having power he is free from all imperfection uh, imperfection so he being god doesn't do things and we being servants and slaves why we want to do those things okay, if they were good he would he would have had it because all goodness lies with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala biyadik al khay whatever is not in him cannot be goodness actually as such then be evil you can harm us very much actually ye cheez masha theek i think the time has now about 1 hour has passed and if there's you still got anything up to i mean if you have a struggling or if you have any problem in relation to purification of the lataif or you can still have one to one meeting with the uh, the teachers uh, and stay till uh, inshallah whatever time and you have so, and also try to improve on this fully so that now you have the ability and some training so every salah you don't need to invest more time zohar time comes jay zohar asar time come it should become the most comforting things um, the most pleasurable time of your life and of your 24 hours the salah it can be like you had this beautiful experience visiting the prophet visiting jannah you cannot see these things on facebook i said or at any any place and thing or kuch anything else any question anything hai to theek hai jazakallah fi subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik mashallah بسم الأشواق